So we take a look at the first of the significant dplyr functions, filter. So you can do things like what is shown here. You can say filter flights. Now recall that flights is a table contained in the package NYC flights 13. So we can say filter flights month is one, day is one. In other words, we are saying get me only those rows from the flights table for which the month has the value 1 and day has the value 1. Okay, notice of course that we are doing comparison so we use double equals not single equals. Okay, And then of course it comes back with only the corresponding thing. In other words we want only the rows for January 1 because month equals 1 is January, day equals 1 is the first. So January 1st and of course the year is 2013 we don't have to specify that because the data, the table has only data for 2013. Okay, so what it's going to do is do a filter and give you only those rows that match the condition. Very important thing to understand. When you say filter a data frame, it might sound like we are changing the underlying table. No, we are not changing the underlying table flights. The underlying table flights is what it is. We are not changing it in any way. All we are doing is extracting the rows which satisfy these conditions and forming another table. Now we are free either to simply list the table as we have done here to print it on the console which is what happens because we didn't assign the result of this operation to any variable. We just did this, the result is a table, it displays on the screen as a table. After that there is no object that contains this data at all. Okay, we didn't store it anywhere, which is fine. But uh, what we are seeing here is if you perform an operation like this, for example, jan.f is filter flights month is one, day is one, then what this is going to do is to create this table with, of the rows that satisfy this condition and assign the result to a new table called jan.f. Okay, so now this table called jan.f contains the rows which satisfy the condition for this table, for satisfy this condition. In other words, only the flights for January 1 of 2013. 2013 is implicit. Okay, now nothing is printed on the console as you already know in R. When you assign something to a variable, then nothing gets printed out. Sometimes we may want to assign the value and also print it. Okay, An easy way to do that is to simply surround our whole command with parentheses. So what we've done is we've taken this earlier command and just put parentheses around it, which is why you see there are two parentheses at the end here. There's one at the start. There was none at the start here and there was only one here. Right? We surrounded the whole expression within parentheses and uh, the result is now the new table that we create is assigned to the variable jan.f. Not only that, the result is also printed on the console for us to see. Okay, For trivial operations, you may not need this. But if you're doing something a little bit more complex and you want to verify what really happened, then this is actually a good practice. There is, of course, always the possibility of confusing between the double equals and the single equals. So just be watchful. But the good thing with dplyr is if you make the mistake, it will point, point out the mistake to you so you can fix it. So for example, if I do this, I made the mistake here. Instead of month saying double equals one, I said month equals one. It comes back with an error message saying filter takes unnamed arguments. right? So this looks like a named argument. right? If you put a single equals, this is this just looks like a regular named argument that you might pass to a function, but uh, filter doesn't take any named arguments. It takes only unnamed arguments. So clearly, it, they are able to spot something and say, "Well, do you think you need the double equals here?" That's great. Okay. So even if you make the mistake, no fear. Uh, you it's going to tell you shortly that you made the mistake. Okay. Now the important thing is here. I put I said filter flights. And I had two conditions, month is one, day is one. And I just separated them by comma. Okay. Implicitly, 
this means and that is we are saying month is one and day is one that is implicit in the filter function when you just put a comma it is implicit that you want both those conditions to be satisfied okay of course you can make it explicit by putting the and operator or if you want or you can put the or operator as we have seen before and operator is the ampersand the or operator is the pipe the, the vertical bar okay these are all the different logical operators that uh, exist in general this is just general logic okay so uh, here in all in all of these diagrams the circle on the left represents x circle on the right represents y okay and the shaded region represents the result okay so here we are saying y and not x meaning think of it as the area that belongs to y which is the second circle and does not belong to the first circle okay so this is the overall area of the second circle but of course we see that part of it belongs to the first circle so when we say y and an exclamation you already know is the not operator right so what is it that belongs to y but does not belong to x is this shaded region okay if you just say x which is the region that belongs to x which is of course the whole circle for x x or y meaning what is the region that either belongs to x or belongs to y or may even belong to both so that means that's the entire thing right this part belongs to x this part belongs to y and the region in between belongs to both of them so when you say x or y it's the whole thing okay if you say x and y meaning what part of this diagram belongs to both x and to y obviously it's the intersecting region okay now there is an operator called the exclusive or operator right when you said x or y it also includes the portion which is x and y it includes this part but when you say exclusive or that's what the xor operator is we will rarely have to use it so we are saying xor x comma y okay that means we are saying show me only things that either belong to x or y but not to both right then obviously the result is this and this is x and not y just like y and not x right what is it that belongs to x but does not belong to y obviously it's this region and y alone is just y circle okay so that's just an explanation of all the logical operators in general this is not specific to r this is general understanding of logical operators in computing let's see how we can apply some of these logical operators now suppose we want to find all the flights within our flights table all the flights that operated either in the month of November or in the month of December. Notice, remember that the months are represented by their respective numbers. So the answer would be filter flights. Month is 11 or the or operator as we've seen before, month is 12. There's also another way to say this. You can say filter flights, month percent in percent. Okay, that's a new operator percent in percent okay that month belongs to this set or this vector 11 12 right both of these will produce the results we want now if you go ahead and google logical operators in r it is possible that you might find a, come across two additional logical operators the double and the double or okay these are also logical operators in r but in terms of meaning, they differ slightly from AND and OR. In fact, these two operators are used uh, more during programming with R, actually writing long lines of code with R and having control uh, flow and all that. They are useful for that. But for most of our purposes, we'll be using the regular AND and OR operator, the single versions. Okay. In fact, this is all we'll be using in the course. So that's what you should be using as well. Right? When you have vectors and you're trying to do logical operators on them, using the AND, AND and OR, OR operators will give you uh, faulty results. Right? So it's better to just stick with AND and OR for now. Okay? Another important thing is filter 
includes only the rows which actually satisfy the condition that you have given right or alternately filter only includes those rows for which your condition evaluates to the value true obviously if the condition is false system is not going to accept it as part of the filtered result more importantly if the result is an na that is if the system figures out that it does the uh, computes the expression for a particular row and finds the result to be na that will not be included in the result okay so filter only includes true results so for example if i have got a table x is you know it's just a vector in this particular case i mean not a vector but one column table and if we say filter df okay x greater than 1 x is the only column right so x is greater than 1 only for this third row for the first row it's false so obviously it's filtered out the second row the result is na so that's also not included because it didn't have a match the only result is the third one which is true and that's all you're going to get okay so you got only the third row uh, so notice that this one here is the row number of the result okay so don't get thrown away by that because the only column is x so the x value of 3 the third row is all that has been returned so again to reinforce the fact that filter only includes true and not false or anything but suppose you say well I want to filter the rows for which the condition is true and also for which the condition is na right I want true or na of course you can do that using the or operator right, filter df x greater than 1 that gives you this we have seen this but if you say I want x greater than 1 but I also want na's you can use the ease.na function right so ease.na x that is the particular row is missing or the x for a particular row is greater than 1 so either of these conditions is satisfied return the result so now you get two rows in the result you get the na which is the, actually the second row of the original data frame but the first row of the result first row of the result and then you get the last row of the original data frame which is the second row of the result okay so you can use the logical operator to get that now 